Hey everyone and welcome back. Continuing on the subject of non-destructive editing, in this video we're going to take a look at smart objects, which can be used in a variety of ways in Photoshop. One of the advantages of smart objects is pixel preservation. I'm sure many of you have found yourself in the following situation. You have a rasterized layer in your document that you want to shrink, so you enter free transform mode with the command or control T shortcut, and then proceed to scale the layer down. However, later on in your edit, you take a look and decide, well, I want it to be a little bit bigger, or back to the original size. So again, you enter free transform mode and scale it back up. Unfortunately, when working with raster layers, scaling upwards usually results in heavy pixelation. Let me show you how working with a smart object can preserve the original pixels and avoid situations like this. Going back to before I scaled down the layer, I'm going to want to convert this layer into a smart object. This can be easily done by right-clicking on your layer in the Layers panel and choosing the Convert to Smart Object option. Essentially what this is doing is preserving the original layer within a document within your document. Makes sense, right? Okay, probably not, but you'll soon understand it completely. So now if I scale down the layer again, I accept the transformation and then decide later on that I want it larger again, I'm able to safely scale that layer back up without losing quality. Now here's the thing about smart objects that you should be aware of. Once the layer has been converted to a smart object, it's not directly editable. If I grab my brush tool and try and paint on this object, I'm going to be presented with a pop-up yelling at me that the layer must be rasterized first. If you want to edit a layer that was converted to a smart object, you must double click on the smart object's thumbnail in the layers panel, which will open up your layer in its containing document. You can see at the top that a new tab has opened with the original layer. Any editing that you want done to the smart object must be done in its containing document. So just to show you how it works, I'm going to again grab my brush tool and scribble over this layer. Now keep in mind that the changes don't automatically get made. You must first save the document just like you would any other file. Up to the file menu and then save. Now if I hop back over to my original document, you can see the changes. Here's another thing to note about smart objects. Because the layer is contained within an embedded document, if you have duplicates of the smart object, editing the source will also update the duplicates. This could be very useful if you're working on, let's say, an icon pack and you want all instances of the icon to update. Let me show you how that would work. Here's a document that contains an icon that I've been working on. In the layers panel, you can see that I have several layers that make up this icon that are contained within a group. First, I must convert the group to a smart object. Just like before, I can right-click on the group and then convert the group to a smart object. Again, once this happens, the contents are no longer editable unless you double-click on the smart object's thumbnail, but we'll get to that point in a moment. Now, to duplicate the icon, with the smart object selected, I'm going to hold down my Option key on the Mac or Alt key on Windows and drag it to the right. Now I'm going to transform it downward so I can preview what it would look like at a smaller size. Perfect. So now that we have a duplicate of the icon, let's go ahead and edit one of them. Because the smart object was duplicated, it doesn't matter which one we edit. Double clicking on either of the smart object's thumbnails will open up the same source file. Now that the source is visible, I'm going to make a pretty simple change using an adjustment layer. Right above the layers that contain the blue glowing lines, I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, and then shift the hue slider to the left until the lines turn orange. Because the other layers underneath are pretty much black and gray, I won't need to clip this adjustment layer. Good, so now that the changes have been made, I can quickly save the document with my Commander Control S shortcut, and you're going to notice that when I hop back over to the original document, both of the icons have been updated. This will certainly save you a lot of time, especially if you're working on a project that contains many instances of the same design. But of course you're probably wondering, well what if I want to duplicate a smart object that doesn't share the same source? Well, it's simple. Instead of simply duplicating the smart object like we just did, right click on it in the layers panel and choose new smart object via copy. This will duplicate that smart object with its own source so you can update it separately from the original. Now the last advantage of smart objects that I want to show you is how they work with filters. Just like adding an adjustment from the image adjustments menu, when you add a filter to a rasterized layer, just like I'm doing now, it's applied directly to that layer. So if you wanted to tweak the settings of that filter at a later time, it's nearly impossible. However, when working with smart objects, filters are added similar to adjustment layers, where you can go back and edit them later on. 
So on this image here, assuming I want to edit non-destructively, I'm going to convert this layer to a smart object by right clicking on it and choose convert to smart object. And then I'm going to add the filter again. Now you might notice that not all filters are available when working with smart objects. Most are, but some will be grayed out. Now when I accept the changes to this blur filter, take a look at the layers panel. The filter that I just added shows up underneath the layer, and just like adjustment layers, at any point I want to edit the settings of that blur, I can simply double click on it, make my changes, and press OK. Of course it can also be hidden or completely deleted if necessary. And that completes our look at smart objects in Photoshop. In the next video, you're going to find out how you can dodge and burn your photos in a non-destructive manner. We'll see you soon.